Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's really a great pleasure to be back here in Champaign. Um, this is the first presentation ever for Bloomed, our, our new uh, enterprise, so um, thank you for, for being here and listening. And um, as you heard, uh, I had previously developed an ag company from startup. This environment here was, was an excellent place for a company to start. And then we ultimately grew our company to be a couple hundred people operating business that, that sold um, seed all around the world. Uh, finished that up about a year ago, and now I'm back at it in the, in the startup space, chasing an idea I had uh, several years ago at the University of Chicago. And, you know, it's a lot of fun to be back at the beginning. So um, let's just go to the first slide and see if I can... There we go. Yeah, so our company's called Bloom. Um, we're looking at uh, interesting compounds from plants. And uh, this is really the inspiration. Um, I think you all know that, that plants are an amazing source of pharmaceuticals. I always like to say it's because they have to sit in one place forever. Bugs come by, microbes land. What are they going to do? They have to develop small molecules and other ways of defending themselves. And so um, today we see about a quarter of our pharm all pharmaceuticals originated with plants, everything from aspirin to opioids to all sorts of interesting kind of compounds came out of, out of plants. I've listed there several different categories of antibacterials. Of course, that's a very active area of research. Um, most of the time when pharma companies have looked at a plant and looked for an active uh, molecule, they look at the leaves. That's just kind of been the obvious place. There's a lot of biomass there. And I think you all know, farmers as well as people with houseplants, if you have a plant leaf that gets infected, what you'll usually see is a spot with dead tissue around it, a necrotic lesion. That's the way the plant is able to wall off that infection and keep it isolated. Um, I spent most of my academic career, though, looking at reproduction. And this picture here at the bottom um, shows you the uh, female flower organ. This is the pistil at the top. Uh, this whole thing's the pistil. This is the stigma. Pollen lands there. A little bit of bio 101 for, for people who might have forgotten. Um, these are the ovules. That's where the seeds come from. And when pollen lands, it grows a long tube that goes down and delivers sperm to those, to those ovules. Um, this is a picture of a pollen grain with a pollen tube protruding, and here you see the pollen tubes arriving at their endpoint. Spent many, many, many hours looking <laughs> at all sorts of species and looking at this stage. And what's really interesting is when you look at floral tissue, you don't see a lot of those necrotic lesions. That's kind of curious, and I've talked to a lot of my colleagues, and we really don't. And yet, you've got an environment where hundreds and hundreds of pollen grains have landed. They're breaking open tissue. It's a very nutrient-rich environment. They're extending these long processes down inside the plant. You would think it would be absolutely full of bacteria and fungus, but that's not what we see. And we don't see those necrotic lesions. The plants don't kill the flowers. <laughs> They stay alive, um, probably because if you don't make seeds, it's, it's end game, you know? So what is it they're doing to defend themselves? That, that's really the open question, and that's the basics of what we're trying to do with Bloom. Um, we are at the early stages of this, and you know, so it's probably a little earlier than ordinarily people would present, but just wanted to tell you a little bit about it. We've got a huge library, proprietary library, of, of very interesting plant materials. Sean's going to tell you more about that. We're, we are now going through a series of tests for antimicrobial activity, antifungal activity. Probably there's a lot of other interesting pharmacological compounds there. Um, once we identify bioactives, we're going to partner. We, we look at this company as a licensing engine, a discovery and licensing engine, and partner with companies um, out there who are looking for bioactives for all sorts of different um, applications. Um, 
once we find something, though, we, we anticipate these won't be coming from soybean and corn, although we're looking for that. We're going to need to scale up, and we'll be using the facilities here, first in the greenhouse, and then um, because both of us are geneticists, we know how to get those agronomic traits into a crop and start producing uh, a real crop. So we'll probably be taming some wild things and, and getting them to the point where they can be produced large scale. Um, and um, as we get our results, we're starting to talk to people about seed round and Series A. I'm going to turn it over to Sean, though, and you'll get to hear how she's setting this up. So. Hi. Um, so I wanted to tell you about the collection that we have so far that's continuing to grow. And so far, we've collected 350 plants. And as we've been doing that, we've been trying to get plants that are as diverse as possible. We're looking at agricultural plants, weeds, ornamentals, herbs, um, trees, just trying to get as much genetic diversity as we can because we do have a large idea of different markets that we could um, use these bioactive compounds for. So we're getting a large enough collection so we can cast our net and see what we find among those. And I'll just skip one slide ahead. This um, is a phylogenetic tree, which just gives you a snapshot. Um, and just to, along here, it's too small to see, but these are the different plants that we have in our collection so far. And if you trace it back, each of these goes to kind of the branches on this tree. And ones that are close together are more closely related. And as you get further apart on this tree, um, they're more, genetically distinct and diverse. So we've tried to collect just a really diverse set of materials. And one thing that we've done as we've collected these materials is not only collect plants that are growing in a garden, kind of a nice tranquil environment, but also looking for those that have been grown in challenging environments. And what's really exciting to us, as Daphne mentioned, you've got the funguses and the bacteria which are there. And if you look at this milkweed plant, um, there's at least 10 different insects crawling all over that, and it's still made seed. So if we can look at these plants that have been collected, covered in bugs or growing next to a hog lagoon or ones that have human and animal traffic or pastures, um, maybe they have more bioactive components in them than plants that are grown more tranquilly. Um, so we're excited to look at those, and our collection um, has both tranquil and these challenged plants, so we can do a comparison and see how that affects them. Um, one other thing that's really nice about Champaign-Urbana is we have a lot of people that are really interested in plants, and were excited to work with us um, when we told them what we were doing. So the local herb society, the master gardeners, um, they've allowed us to access their collections. Um, so we've gotten a lot of plants that are from the poison plant garden or have already been screened for medicinal qualities or um, herbal extracts, things that we can test right away as we start screening our materials. Um, we've also worked with local beekeepers because we know that bees can transmit a lot of materials, so we've, we're looking at some of her materials. And along the way, I made my kids help me collect because we've <laughs> had a lot of material to collect. And they were Cub Scouts and told their Cub Scout friends about it. So we've got this little network of Cub Scouts looking for unique plants for us as well. So it's been a fun project, and they've been learning about different plant species along the way. Great. Thanks. And uh, so just to, to finally wrap up, um, we, we think there's a lot of different market opportunities here. We're, we're really focused on getting demonstrating for the company some revenue quickly. So we may do collaborations with pharma companies that are looking for libraries of interesting compounds. I think one of the things that's really exciting for me from, from a scientific perspective is back when I was doing this work initially at the university lab, maybe um, you know, 12, 13 years ago, um, it was much more difficult to identify natural products than it is today. The, the capabilities of GC mass spec and, and other kinds of analytics have, have really improved a lot. So we think we can very quickly characterize these, um, these contents and, and looking at whether it's uh, for human health, animal health, we think there's a tremendous opportunity in veterinary medicine. 
Um, lots of people are actually looking to natural products for washing lettuce in, in large-scale food prep, so we think there could be something there for food sanitation. Um, feed additives, potentially, and then I think very low-hanging fruit. There's a tremendous interest in botanicals, um, natural products for cos cosmetic industry, and so on. So, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to take a number of these species down this path, and um, just will enjoy interacting with all of you um, as we get this started. So, thanks again for uh, your attention. Appreciate it. Yeah.